Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Print All the Things, Episode 7. Thank you for coming by and listening to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about 3D printing and all kinds of great things surrounding the topic. This is Episode 7. If you haven't caught our last episode, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also to my Anchor slash Spotify podcast so that you can catch up on the latest shows. So without further ado, let's jump right into the news. The first story I want to talk about is the biggest story of the week and probably of the month. Anchor, the company that makes battery backup packs and electronics and things like that. You may have heard of them. They make great products. They're coming out with a 3D printer and they have announced that today. This printer is called the Anchor Make M5 3D Printer. And they tout it as being five times faster, extra intelligent, no comparison. That's a bold topic. Let's get the bad news out of the way first. It's actually only available at the moment on Kickstarter. So if you're not too keen on doing a Kickstarter thing, you might want to wait until it comes out. But uh, it's actually looking pretty good on paper. 250 millimeters per second print speed. Insanely fast. Very, very fast print speeds. And uh, whenever you see something that fast, whenever I see a printer that fast, my first thought is, how's the quality? If the quality is okay, then yeah, we can talk. But if the quality is garbage, then nobody's going to print at that speed. So they tout that uh, their design that they've uh, that they've created will be able to do top quality prints at five times the speed that you normally print. Like I'm used to printing at like, what, 40 to 60 Probably like 60 millimeters per second for a majority of my prints. Um, sometimes I'll go lower than that, you know, if I need to do some special things. But 250 millimeters per second is insanely fast. That's very fast. That's like Voron speeds. And if you, if you, if you're like a fan of uh, of 3D printers like me, you probably have heard of the van- of the Voron brand. So they're they're up there with the Vorons at 250 millimeters per second. So this is a bold claim. Let's see if they can back it up. 260 degrees Celsius top nozzle temperature. So that'll take care of a lot of different types of filament, including PETG, uh, TPU, and, you know, of course, PLA. Some of the more popular things. It has a textured PEI magnetic sheet, which is very nice. Uh, That means that you can take the the sheet off and flex it so that you can pop your prints off. I'm kind of used to that now. I have have Prusa printers, so that's a very common thing. Um... Except mine are smooth, but this one is only textured, so there isn't a smooth option. So if you do need a smooth option for this, you might have to, uh, if they don't come out with one, you're going to have a, probably have to invest in a smooth uh, smooth PEI plate. A 49-point auto bed leveling system, which is always desired. And when a printer doesn't have auto bed leveling I raised an eyebrow and I'm like, do I really want that printer? To me, auto bed leveling should be included in from 22 on 2022 onward. I think auto bed leveling should be a standard feature for printers. Uh, Back in the day, you know, early days, it was, you know, wasn't as common. But today it really needs to be it needs to be included in everything. If you ask me, has a build volume of 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters. I believe that's right. Um, one of the things that, I, the, the features I see here is that it has a built-in 1080p camera. And that is intriguing because I do time lapses and I like to monitor my prints. Right now I use some uh, very affordable t- wise cams to do uh, my monitoring. And uh, I use uh, OctoPrint and OctoLapse for my time lapses. Anchor Make, this M5 3D printer, has a built-in time-lapse function through their software and uh, also built-in monitoring through their software with this 1080p camera, which is pretty cool. That's a nice thing to have. Um, I think what uh, what I'm seeing here is that they've they've looked at a lot of the popular add-ons and things that people do to their printer, and they're trying to create an out-of-box experience for those same things, which is, to me, smart. It's a smart thing to do. And last but not least, uh, the thing I want to discuss about this Anchor Make is they're using USB-C. Oh, how many times have you guys tried to plug in a USB port and it's the wrong way? And then you flip it and it's still the wrong way. And then you flip it again, it's the wrong way. And then you flip. Oh, man. 
Okay, now let's talk about what's on the printer. Let's see what Buona has printed this week. It better be all the things. The first thing we're going to talk about is the Poly Smooth. I've already talked about the um, the Slate Gray. We've already shown that. We've already talked about the Transparent. Now we're on to the White, the Poly Smooth White. And uh, this is uh, the next thing that I showed you is a, is a print that I showed you last week with the uh, Neon Green. And the call, call Your Mav, we're doing the Splash Bowl again. This is the Splash Bowl by Sensei Ralph on Thingiverse. And uh, let me let me kill one of the lights. I've come up with a method here to kill one of the lights to kind of show off the shine. And you can see the white poly smooth inside is very glistening and shiny and smooth. Uh, and it's very, very cool. Very, very cool print. Um, I really like this print. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of different colors with it. And again, it's a it's a two piece type of thing, so you can remove it and you know interchange different colors with different types of uh with, of filament. And this is the Call Your Mauve Mixtape 15. Yeah, Mixtape 15 from uh, PrintedSolid.com. Absolutely amazing. Um, I had a good experience with this filament. It was definitely easier than the transparent. Like I said, in uh, Print All the Things Episode Six. The transparent filament takes a little bit more work, takes a little bit more work than the um, than the other filaments do. This one was just I printed at 220, and uh, I I think I applied four coats of IPA to this. If you're not familiar with the poly smooth process, uh, we talked about it in episode five and episode six. What you do is that you print normally, right, and then you apply a thin coat of alcohol using I have a spray bottle. And uh, you give it a, a few minutes to dry. I let mine dry for like 15 minutes. And then you repeat the process until you get the desired shine and smoothness that you uh, that you want. And uh, it's a very similar process to what people use with acetone and other smoothening agents. Uh, this is one specifically designed, this product from Polymaker, which is a sponsor of this stream. Uh, boink! Polymaker provided me these spools of filaments. And... Uh, this is a process specifically, this is a filament specifically designed to do it with IPA, with using alcohol. Um, and the white really, really shines. I'm, 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 I keep saying this, I probably need to get a t-shirt with it, but pictures just don't do the filament justice. They just don't do the filament justice. Is that a bubble inside there? That actually is a bubble. <sighs> wow. I actually got a bubble inside. I guess some uh, IPA pulled up inside and dried. I don't know what happened there, but uh, yeah, there's a little bubble inside there. That's actually kind of cool. So yeah, that was the first thing we printed was the uh, the splash bowl. Okay, so the next thing I printed on with the with the poly smooth white, or it's a very popular model. Some of you have even asked me, "Are you going to sell that?" And as a Etsy shop owner at buonalabs.com. I love to hear those words. Are you going to sell that? The answer is yes, I am going to sell it. But let me show you what I'm talking about first. Make it show. Sure. Mr. Picard is back. This time we brought him back in the poly smooth white. Oh, like uh, pictures just don't do him justice, dude. They just don't. They don't do him justice. You see this thing in person, man. It will blow your mind. So this is Mr. Captain Picard. I am going to put this on Buona Labs. Um, I don't know how many I'll have available because the you know the Poly Smooth is like a it's going to be an on demand thing. So we'll 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 play it by ear. But I am going to have some normal models of of Mr. Picard. This is an Eastman model. If you haven't seen this before, um, I have had this on the shop before, but I sold out. Um, but we can restock as soon as we can. And uh, this is like I said, this was much easier to work with. Then the transparent, because we did this on episode five with the slate gray. And Mr. Picard here really, really shines, pun intended. So this is the poly smooth white. And I've come up with a better method. Uh, There's a little string down there, but you notice that there's no paper towel stuff down there. We have a better method of, uh, of drying these now. So you don't have to worry about paper towel nonsense at the, at the bottom. 
<laughs> I actually have like an egg crate thing that I use, uh, that people use to, to dry painted stuff. So I actually put on there. It has, I use it to paint too. So it has like primer on it. So sometimes you'll see like little primer dots, like the paint will lift off or the primer will lift off of it, but I could just peel those off really easy. So it comes off really nice. So that's Mr. Jean-Luc Picard bus by way of Mr. Eastman. One of the best modelers out there. Thank you, Eastman, for providing that model for us. Okay. So we're also going to talk about the other filament. That's all the poly smooth that. Well, not actually not all, but we got one more to show you later. Uh, we're going to talk about the Jesse PLA subscription box, the other filament that we got. And the other filament that we got, other than Call Your Mauve, which is the, the mauve color, was uh, is neon yellow. Now, neon yellow very similar to neon green. They're both neon. One is yellow, one is green. So we have the neon yellow. And I thought about what I printed with the neon green. And one of the things that came to, came to mind was uh, drippy buckets. We did about 10 drippy buckets, it seems like. I don't know how many. But I did do one with neon green. And it came out really nice. This time, I decided to do a different variant of the neon, of the uh, drippy bucket. With this neon yellow. But... I decided to do a square bucket with a handle. So here you go. This is neon yellow. It's got the four quadrants inside. So it's got the insert where you can put pencils and pens or whatever. Uh, but this one, I, I, I decided to do the handle because I didn't do the handle before. And this is the uh, drippy bucket square version by Dave Moneysign. You can find him on printables and other sites. I'll put the links of all these STLs and models and Patreons associated with these models in the show description. This is another drippy bucket. One of my favorite models. This thing is so easy, number one, to print and fun to print and very, very, very attractive. It, it looks really good on your desk. You can use it as an organizer or you can get one without an insert and just use it as a catch-all container. A little bucket. I doubt it's waterproof with the PLA I'm using, but you know, I'm not going to put any liquid in here. This is all about just knickknacks, patty wax, and give a dog a boneses. <laughs> so this is the square, square drippy bucket available, uh, over on printables.com by Dave money sign. Very popular model. You're going to see a lot of makes of this on there. I'm going to post this on there too. So I can get my Prusa meters. Of course, I got to get my Prusa meters on printables. Um, but uh, yeah, it's very, very sturdy, very stable, easy to print, no supports at all required, and takes two seconds to assemble. Really easy. So that's Call Your Mauve alongside the uh, Neon Yellow, two, the two Jesse PLA colors that came with the PrintedSolid.com subscription box. Now, the other thing I printed from, and I haven't cleaned this up, so I apologize. The other thing I printed using the Neon Yellow was uh, a model by 3D Print Bunny. And again, I'm gonna apologize because I have not cleaned this up. Literally, it just finished printing like less than an hour ago. This one took a while to print. And this one is called the Rose Bowl. No, not the football Rose Bowl. It's a Rose Bowl from 3D Print Bunny. And uh, this one is a very nice rose covered bowl. And neon yellow. And again, it's very stringy. Let me kill one of the lights so you can get a little bit of a light variation here. Thank you, Elgado, for making such wonderful key lights that I can... Which is a sponsor, but not on this video. Corsair. <laughs> um, and it's just a nice bowl. Nice bowl. And you can see some of the stringing inside, little bloops and blops that I have to clean up. But like I said, it just came off the printer not too long ago. And it took a while. Took a while to print. I think it was like one day and eight hours. Very long. <laughs> I printed it full size and uh, default speeds on my Prusa MK3S. Oh, by the way, I haven't said what I printed everything on. Uh, this was printed on the Prusa MK3S Plus. This was printed on both the Mini and the MK3S Plus. The uh, neon yellow pieces were printed on the MK3S and the bucket and the handles were printed on the Prusa Mini. Uh, both of these pieces were printed on the Prusa Mini and Jean-Luc Picard was printed on the Prusa Mini as well. So if you're looking at a printer like 
what printer you want to get from Prusa. Uh, just know that the MK3S and the, and the Prusa Mini, you know, we're working in tandem with these two. Yeah, so this is the Rose Bowl. Pretty nice. I like it. It's not too bad. Not too bad. I, I, I think the next time, if I am going to print this again in a different color, I'm going to adjust the settings and try to get that print time down. Uh, this was 0 .4, 0.15 layer height with a 0.4 nozzle, 220C. Uh, like I said, default perimeters and stuff. I can probably speed it up, maybe. But that one day print time was kind of long for my taste. So I definitely want to reduce that. Okay, so those are all the those are the poly smooths. That's the Jesse PLA subscription box. Now I want to talk about a special thing that just dropped in my lap, actually last night. Uh, a fellow community member by the name of Loyal Moses is uh, he has a Patreon and he has a new feature where he's uh, he's featuring some new modeler each month. And the featured modeler featured modeler this month is Fix Him Dude. Fix Him Dude. Fix some dude who is very, very talented at making these, uh, these very nice plates. They're, they're, um, what are they called? The, uh, they're called kit cards. I had to look it up. They're called kit cards. They're basically these cards where you have a build kit and they're all connected and you break them off, you know, from the old school kit cards. So he created a kit card for BD1 from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. If you guys played that video game, it's the little robot uh, from Jedi Fallen Order, and uh, it, it took a while. It, it was a, uh, it took a while to make because uh, I think the print time itself, well, it took a while to print. The print time itself was like eight hours, but then I had to assemble it, and the assembly process was actually pretty fun. It wasn't that bad, except I had some tolerance problems in the Collier Mov. Uh, it, it's kind of weird that this happened. I had tolerance issues on both sides of the spectrum. With the Collier Mav, the tolerance was too loose. So the, the, the parts was just like, they were very, very loose. You saw it. How'd you see it? Um, they were too loose. So I had to actually glue it a little bit. And uh, yeah, let's, let's hold it like this. You can see them here. And the, the parts were a little bit too loose. So I had to glue it a little bit. And um, you can probably see some of the glues on some of the connectors just to keep it stable. So it was a little bit loose with the tolerances. And I printed this at 0.15 millimeter layer height. So I can do some adjustments to tighten the tolerances up a little bit more. But overall, very good model, easy to assemble. And again, you'll, you might have to adjust your filament settings to get tolerances correct and stuff. And may have to do some deburring or some other stuff to get things to look a little bit better. So I use some 3D gloop to, uh, to kind of fill in the gaps for the Call Your Mob version of this. And uh, came out pretty nice. Now, I also did this in Polysmooth. Ooh, Polysmooth one. Yeah, I also did this in Polysmooth. And I got to say, working with different materials, you can kind of tell the material property differences. Because the uh, when I assembled this, roll that B-roll footage. When I assembled this with uh, the, the Polysmooth white, it had the opposite tolerance behavior of the Collier Mob. The tolerance behavior in this one, it was a little too tight. And this material was not as strong as the PLA was because I was a little bit, I was manhandling a little bit, trying to poke these things in and the tabs, the little uh, the notches were breaking off. So I had like maybe four four of the notches just like broke off or cracked because I was, you know, the tolerances were a little bad. So what I can do in the future, just I'm not knocking the model because the model's great. But what I can do to alleviate that is to do a little trimming of the areas with some tools and just trim off some of the material just to get the tolerances a little bit better so that they can fit a little bit better. And, uh, and just, yeah, just do it that way. So this is what it came out to look like. Uh, and this one I had actually had to glue as well because pieces just, <laughs> they just broke off, man. Um, but it is shiny. This is the poly smooth. You can kind of tell it is shiny. It is. I have, I have some shine. I did three coats on this shiny and smooth. So it's got a little bit of a texture to it. Uh, and it came out really nice, but it's a little bit fragile. 
because I had to I had to glue quite a few quite a few joints together. And even with 3D, I, I use 3D gloop with this uh, kind of as a science experiment because this is uh, not PLA, but I have the PLA version of 3D gloop. So technically, I wasn't really supposed to use the 3D gloop on this, but I did anyway because I needed some glue. Um, so it's not specifically designed for this, but it worked. It's stuck and it's sticking, but it still feels a little fragile. Like if I drop this, it'll definitely fall apart. And if I hold it wrong, it might deform because it's only been drying for like, like two hours, two or three hours, which is long enough normally for 3D gloop. But yeah, this came out nice. This model is good. When I print more of these and I am going to print more, I've learned quite a bit of what to do and what not to do. The assembly process is very, very, very easy. Um, and fix some dude does a great job with these kit cards. So if you want this model, if you want this, go over to patreon.com slash loyal Moses. This is something he's offering, excuse me, as a benefit to his patrons, uh, and fix some dude. I'll put his, his, his information in the show description as well. You can check out fix some dudes information about all his models. He's on printables. He's all over the place. Check out other fix some dudes stuff. Uh, he's won contests. I think with his, uh, his Christmas TIE Fighter, he won a, a printables.com contest, which I think he got a printer out of that. I think he got a Prusa MK3S out of that. Uh, fix some dude, great modeler, loyal Moses, doing a lot of great stuff for the community. Check out his Patreon. You can have access to this model too by going to uh, patreon.com slash loyal Moses. Um, very, very cool model. I'm telling you, man, those kit cards, if you haven't printed one yet, just go up to, go up to printables.com. I'm a little biased. You can go to other sites too, but go up to printables.com and look at Fix Some Dude's profile and look at all the kit cards he's done and print some out. You'll be amazed. You print them out, you pop them out, and then you just assemble them and you get this cool, cool thing in front of you. So that's BD1. BD1, fresh off the printer. The glue's still drying a little bit. Uh, I've learned some lessons. So when I, when I do future ones, they'll come out a lot cleaner, especially with the poly smooth. Now, going back to the poly smooth, um, I, if I had the choice, I would not do this in poly smooth again because the shine is okay. It's okay, but it's not like, you know, as glistening as Picard was. So if I hold up Picard here, you know, Picard is like super silky smooth, shiny. He's got a lot of smooth surfaces, but you know, BD one is not as smooth. It's got more of a texture finish, uh, but it's not as smooth. So the amount of effort I put in to make this work. And you notice I'm not holding it by the legs because it might fall off. Uh, the amount of effort I put in to make this work with the outcome that I've gotten, I actually don't think I'll do it in poly smooth. This, this poly smooth again. Um, I'm probably going to stick to a PLA. I may try it in PETG or another, uh, another, um, material, but I don't think I want to do this in poly smooth again. It was a good experiment. I learned a lot, but I don't think I want to do it again. Now with the Jesse filament, it actually looks really good. Uh, it came out really nice. This one is a lot more stable. I can actually hold this by the legs. Uh, and I've got 3D glue for PLA. And PLA is easier to print. I have a suspicion. Fix some dude can probably... Uh, he can probably correct me on this. But this was probably designed with PLA in mind. Um, and I can kind of tell. When I when I used the PolySmooth material, it didn't feel like... It, it, it was it was fighting me a lot more than, than it was with this one. Um, I actually had some trouble with the body part. I kept, if you, but <laughs> my B roll footage might show it, but I kept assembling it backwards. And I was like, what's going on? I kept putting it on backwards, even though the instructions clearly say this is the front, this is the back. I kept assembling it backwards. And I was like, why is it not lining up? Why is it not lining up? This is a great model. This is, uh, this is BD1, again from Jedi Fallen Order, new droid. If you haven't played that video game, you should play it. It's a very good video game. This droid is lovable. And thank you, uh, Fix Some Dude, for making this great model. Thank you, Loyal Moses, for uh, hooking me up with the, uh, the STL to show you all. Because I want to I wanna disclaim that. He gave me the STL to, to print and uh, to show you all that. Whoops. Grogu just fell. Grogu number 16 just fell. Okay. So that is all the things. We have printed all the things for this week, Episode 7. I hope you all enjoyed all the content. Next week... 
I'll give you a sneak preview. Next week, uh, Polymaker, these guys, they're sending me some more filament. Polymaker sending me some more filament. So we're going to be printing some cool stuff with that. Uh, and we're going to be using a different well-known modeler that you guys may have heard of. Yeah, we're going to be printing some of his stuff, showing off some of his stuff, his stuff on next week's episode. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to bornalabs.com, which is my Etsy shop. We will be putting some of these up for sale, the ones that I have rights to sell, like Picard. I do have rights to sell this one. So you'll see some Picards up on Born Labs very soon. And some of the prints you'll see next week as well. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, yeah. So thank you, Polymaker, for the sponsorship. We are going to be giving away two spools of filament this coming Saturday. Saturday, April... <laughs> April 9th. Saturday, April 9th. Come by my live stream at twitch.tv slash Buona. We will be giving away two spools of filament there. We're going to do it live again. And I believe on next week's episode or maybe the one after that, we'll come back to our YouTube and, you know, see if more people are commenting here. So please leave a comment, comment, like, subscribe. And if you like the content, you know, just click that subscribe button, click a like button or comment, or just let me know. Hey, Buona, I like the episode. You don't even have to subscribe. Leave a comment and say, Buona, this was a good episode. Or Buona, next time, you know, maybe you should burr that down. Maybe you should, you know, sand that down a little bit before you break it, Buona. Thank you, everybody. So I'll see you all Saturday for the giveaway on twitch.tv slash Buona. We, gener we generally start around 6 p.m. Eastern, but uh, I've been starting a little bit later than usual. Right now, it's 4 a.m. Just to give you guys a little look, some, some perspective. It's 4 a.m. Eastern right now, and I'm recording. I haven't even started editing. So when you wake up in the morning, hopefully this thing will be edited, beautiful and delicious for you to enjoy. And you'll have a couple days to ingest it before the... Uh, before uh, I come out with the, the giveaway on Saturday. We do 3D print live at twitch.tv slash Buona. Whenever I'm playing a video game or we're talking about whatever, there's something being printed. We field questions about 3D printing. We talk about 3D printing, even if I'm playing like Final Fantasy 14 or Fortnite or I don't know, whatever I'm playing. If I'm, if I'm dabbling in a video game, some 3D printing is going on. All right. Some 3D printing is definitely, definitely going on. Okay. We've got some cool stuff coming up with some uh, with another 3D, 3D printer company, which I haven't decided on the date yet. I'm still setting up everything to get that going. So once I have a formal announcement, we'll announce it here and I'll let you guys know what that's going to be. Uh, it has to do with the company that's got some yellow and black. Maybe if I focus, I'll I'll come up with whoever is going to be doing this sir. With the company. I just have to focus on what it is. Hmm. Thanks everybody for watching episode seven of Print All the Things. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in supporting this particular endeavor, go to patreon.com slash buona. That is my Patreon. That's right. I have a Patreon as well that you can support me, my 3D printing adventures my gaming adventures, my tech video adventures, my everything online adventures. You can support all of that. This is my full-time engagement, engagement gig that I am doing and it's supported by you, my fans. You guys support me through Patreon. You support me through Twitch. You support me through YouTube. And uh, I appreciate you all for being here and all the patrons who are there supporting me. Thank you so much for all your help. You guys make it happen. I am so grateful and thankful for all of you. Thank you so much. That concludes episode seven. I'll see you all next week. And remember, print all the things. Bye.